There are many ancient sites which we have already covered here on our channel that, regardless of the unexplained features we continue to expose, are little researched or indeed revisited by mainstream academia. These sites are predictably given an illogical explanation for their origin and creation, dismissed and ignored, as if the book regarding their history is complete and thus closed from further study. However, there exist some sites that required such a long time excavation that many researchers, some funded, others with independent interests, were able to reveal simply astonishing features, ancient feats of engineering before they were attributed to groups who were simply incapable of achieving them. The Hypogeum in Malta is one such place, a place we have covered before, that regardless of the academic denial of unexplained discoveries, continues to be well known for the 6,000 ancient burials found within the ruins, with no less than six elongated unexplainable skulls, possibly attached to corpses discovered amongst them. These reported remains later vanished and are now utterly denied as having ever existed. Yet so many researchers became aware of these discoveries, later sharing this cover-up with the world, the official museum and curator tasked with the responsibility of caring for the site and the countless remains found within, is still, to this day, inundated year by year with requests and calls regarding these unexplainable remains. So many, in fact, that the official body was compelled to put up an official statement regarding the lack of any such remains in their care, along with a denial of them ever having existed. However, there are many more anomalies, no less astonishing, still hidden within the hypogeum. Anomalies which are no less difficult to explain, or indeed deny as existing. Known as the Oracle Room, there is a place within this complex construction which, if one stands upon a specifically made altar, their voice can mysteriously be heard throughout, even at speaking level, as if amplified and complemented by the structure's entire design. Yet the most interesting thing regarding this incredible feature is the resonance in which it converts one's voice to and the effect this can have on the human brain. Known as the holy frequency, the hypogeum not only carries one's voice throughout, but does so at 111 hertz. Paul Devereux, an archaeoacoustician, a professor from Cambridge University in the UK, has also discovered that the burial mounds of Cairns also resonated sounds at this mysterious 111 hertz. Devereux investigated this intriguing relation of 111 hertz and found out something quite interesting. He realized there were many ancient texts describing beliefs which are based on a divine sound or divine frequency principle. According to Devereux, Pythagoras created his musical scale starting with the note A, which curiously resonates at the frequency of 111 Hz. Additionally, further research with MRI scans has shown that the brain switches off the prefrontal cortex and also deactivates the language center that is responsible for holistic processing, creativity, intuition, and inducing an emotional plateau at exactly 111 Hz. This reaction many field tests revealed resulted in an experience described as a divine level of meditation in a number of subjects. This trance, some now believe, allows one to get connected with the universe, God, or a creator. The question is, who knew such advanced knowledge so far back within antiquity? How were they able to create such stone structures which amplified one's voice to exactly this frequency? It seems preposterous to continue to attest that this amazing structure was somehow built by our lesser capable modern ancestors over 3500 years ago. With such amazing discoveries and cover-ups which have been made here, we feel that we have merely scratched the surface in modern times of the secrets this mysterious place must hold. It is a place which is undoubtedly highly compelling. Around 150 kilometers west of Port Maputo, South Africa, the remains of a huge metropolis can be found. 
an ancient site measuring an astonishing 1,500 square kilometers in size. Suspected by some to in fact once have been part of an even larger civilization, estimated by some to have been around 10,000 square kilometers in size, and constructed 160,000 to 200,000 years ago. The region is somewhat remote, and the stone circle remnants were only ever encountered by local farmers, who assumed they were made by some indigenous people within the past. Amazingly, or rather conveniently, modern archaeology has seemingly forgotten to investigate this amazing place. Fortunately, this all changed when researcher and author Michael Tellinger, in association with Johann Heiner, a local fireman and pilot who had actually been looking at these ancient ruins for years, decided to investigate. Heiner had the unique opportunity to see these incredible structures from the air and knew that their significance was undoubtedly not appreciated. Quote, when Johann first introduced me to the ancient stone ruins of southern Africa, he had no idea of the incredible discoveries we would make in the following years. The photographs, artifacts and evidence we accumulated all point towards a lost civilization that precede all others, not for a few hundred years or a few thousand, but many thousands of years." End quote. According to Tellinger, these discoveries are so incredible that they will require a complete paradigm shift in how we view our human history. Quote, I see myself as someone quite open-minded, but I admit that it took me over a year to figure it out, and I realize that we are actually dealing with the oldest structures ever built by man on Earth. We have been taught that no ancient civilization of significance ever existed within South Africa. Powerful civilizations all emerged in Sumeria and Egypt and other places, Michael Tellinger stated. Regardless of what certain individuals claim regarding the age and indeed size of this site, it is certainly of historical significance, going against all currently upheld understandings of the timelines regarding ancient civilizations within South Africa. As Dan Eden from ViewZone put it, quote, I would suggest that the Sumerian story was given as a base metaphor for actual ancient cataclysms that caused the diminished planetary resonance and a spiritual injury to the psychoacoustic field of human consciousness. He continued, The tablets of Sumer describe the Anunnaki as a race of extraterrestrial beings who enslaved humanity for the purpose of exploiting our gold for protective use in the atmosphere of their home planet. I understand the Sumerian mythology as a metaphor for the cataclysmic changes that occurred in the deep human past, which offset the psychoacoustic balance of human consciousness." End quote. Tucked away in the bowels of the Israel Museum within Jerusalem is a small, inconspicuous artifact that if the claims of its origins, believed by many independent researchers and scholars alike, be true, it would support the existence of a remarkable treasure, which countless individuals over the millennia have become convinced of its existence. Yet their efforts to discover this treasure were all to no avail. Yet a small ivory pomegranate, about the size of an adult's thumb, with some rather intriguing inscriptions still readable upon it, could possibly prove those who believe in its existence right all along. The object's Paleo-Hebrew inscription contains the divine name of Yahweh, which was used by the ancient Israelites. If authentic, then this small ivory pomegranate may be a still-existing head of a scepter of King Solomon, which could have only been found within a treasure and possible tomb which many claim still remains beneath Solomon's temple itself. What makes this treasure so incredibly intriguing, if indeed it existed, along with its gold and silver relics and the aforementioned scepters and canes, was that with this collection has long been claimed to have been the storage place for the Ark of the Covenant, whose location is also continually debated by many different fields of interest. The scepter's head's authenticity has, predictably, been dismissed by some and argued as real by others. Yet having first came to the attention of the public over 30 years ago, its discovery and possible incredible origins 
have received a suspiciously low level of media attention. Paleographer André Lemaire initially stumbled across the ivory pomegranate in 1979, for sale in an antiquity shop in Jerusalem. Lemaire published a note on the object in the French scholarly journal Revue Biblique in 1981, and by his 1984 issue of BAR, the inscribed ivory pomegranate was really beginning to be looked at seriously. For 15 years, the inscribed ivory pomegranate could be seen at the Israel Museum, displayed in a special room with a direct beam of light on it. In 2005, however, a committee comprised of Israel Antiquities Authority and Israel Museum scholars published a report in the Israel Exploration Journal concluding that the inscription was a forgery. However, this claim by the individuals who forensically examined the object originally were later redacted, stating they could not confirm its authenticity, yet were reluctant to state it as authentic. Yet regardless, it is now curiously protected and not on display. Is this object really a surviving relic from the treasures of the Temple of Solomon? Does this support the possibility that other treasures, specifically the Ark of the Covenant, could really exist? We find such possibility highly compelling. Gold Sought after and killed for since the beginning of time, it has held a unique place within the human psyche for countless millennia. Never rusting or tarnishing, precious ancient golden artifacts, often left with the dead, are discovered many centuries, sometimes millennia later, still glistening like the day they were left. Perhaps one of the more peculiar, visually impressive, yet suspiciously little-known ancient golden artifact has to be the Berlin Golden Hat. And although, predictably, a rather mundane modern history has been attached to it, we believe there is substantial evidence to suggest it is in fact an upart, an out-of-place artifact. Supposedly, according to the academics, it is a late Bronze Age artifact, somehow made during this era, from incredibly thin gold leaf. It now resides within the Noise Museum on Museum Island, Berlin, in a room all by itself within an elaborate maximum security display case. One has to wonder, with such excessive security, could this hat perhaps be more historically valuable than we are being led to believe? The Bronze Age was so named because of the technological ability to work with particular metals, bronze being that metal, hence the name of the age. The question is, how did a developing Bronze Age people create such a delicately constructed, elaborately decorated item so accurately out of gold leaf? The Berlin hat is the best preserved specimen among four others, also predictably dated to the Bronze Age of Central Europe. Two were found in southern Germany, and one in the west of France, all located within the 19th and 20th centuries. It is academically assumed that the hat served as the insignia of deities or priests within the context of a sun cult, a studied area of historical cultural society widespread throughout Central Europe at the time. It is at best a presumption based on many other presumptions. Interestingly, the hats also display complex astronomical and calendrical functions more compelling evidence to suggest these hats are in fact items left by an advanced civilization, possibly reused by a later culture. The Berlin Gold Hat was put on sale in the international arts trade in 1995. In 1996, the Berlin Museum für Wohr und Frugestichte bought it as an important Bronze Age artifact. The seller claimed that the object came from an anonymous Swiss private collection which had been assembled in the 1950s and 1960s. It assumed that the hat was found in southern Germany or Switzerland. The good preservation of the cone suggests that, like the Schifferstadt example, it must have been carefully filled with soil or ashes and then buried upright in relatively fine soil. An incredible possible upart.